I so as we're working on looping and if statements and simple guessing games, we're at a point where I'd like you to start playing with some code that will print ASCII art on the screen. So the term ASCII is an, an acronym for something along the lines of the American Standards Institute. And, and they've decided a long time ago what numbers stored internally in the computer will relate to what characters. There's charts out there you can use. So I'll bring one up on the screen here. Get to the window and just say ASCII art chart or ASCII chart. So I know from experience that the letters that we use on the keyboard, like A through Z, capital A starts at a 65. So if I, if I look in this corner up here, I see the letter A is the decimal value 65. And that's going to continue by 1 all the way up till Z, which is 90. And what the key point here is there's a numerical equivalent of a character representation. The number is not going to fit in one character. For example, base 10, 65 does not fit into one position. It's 6 tens, 5 ones. However, that relates to a character A when it's stored internally in memory. So some of the codes that you see here, all of these should be able to be printed. One of them that's kind of special should be a bell, and it's going to vary based on the system. So looks like the bell is number seven. Let's keep that in mind that the bell is seven. I can print out a value, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to print out the values of ASCII in a printf statement in online GDB. There's going to be some links down below. I want you to see how you can do some of this. We can take a text value, such as here I put in the word judged, on this site here, and I can have it test all the different fonts, and I can scroll through, and I can pick which font I like, and then copy it from there. So I'm going to cancel it there because I'm sure I can find something within the first 200. Now you really need to keep yourself for width down to about 8, I'm sorry, 80 across. So you're going to want to make sure that you don't grab something really long. It's not going to fit on the screen with online GDB. Special characters are going to make it complicated, but you can do a copy and paste. This example right here is pretty simple. I'm going to click on select and copy. And now I can bring that into online GDB and I can set it up as a print statement. This is an earlier version I did. I'm not real happy with that version when it showed up on the screen. So I'm repeating this process to show you how to take some text and convert it so that it prints in an ASCII format. I'm going to make this a little bit larger for you. And what I'm going to do is borrow, or I should say copy, the first character here from line 14. And I'm going to start to paste those at the beginning of each line down below here. So I'm just going to click at the beginning of each of these lines to include a printf statement at the beginning. Now the thing about a printf statement that we've been talking about is a backslash key says something special is about to happen. For example, at the end of the line here, we see backslash n, which means go down a line. Now I need to end my, my string in quotes. That literal value needs to be terminated with the set or ended with the set of characters. So I'm going to copy this for the other end of the lines here. That's right. I have to mouse up. Now right now, if I were to print this, the computer is going to see something like a backslash, which it's turned blue, so we know that's interpreting it differently. And it's not going to do what we see. It's not going to be what you see is what you get. So I'm going to go in here and change a single backslash to a double backslash. I think of it this way. Up on line 17, when it sees the first backslash, the computer says something special is going to happen. When it sees the N, it says, oh, it's a new line character. If it was a backslash T, it would be a tab character. So when I'm going across line 20 here and I add a second one, the first one, the computer sees as something special is going to happen. And the second one says, ah, just kidding, give me a slash. A 
that's how I think of it. It just helps me to, to process what's going on. So everywhere there's a backslash and I should go across one line at a time and it would have been smarter for me to start this at the top so that I wouldn't have to keep reminding myself or to think, where have I gone yet? Um, but since I started on that line, I can do this. In other tools, it's probably easier to do this with an edit and replace or find and replace. Now it doesn't look at all good right here. And maybe I did this right, maybe I did it wrong, but I'm gonna try to run it. And there's gonna be two versions of my name as a logo in the C++ program if I did this right. The first one, which looked great when I looked at it in code, doesn't look good. The second one turned out pretty crisp and tight. So this is a way of having your ASCII experience, like your guessing game, showing up with something that's got some text, such as, you know, you died or game over or good luck. So keep them short, keep them crisp, keep them school appropriate, and start to add ASCII art elements for a splash screen, a game over screen, or any other thematic elements that you might want to add. Now, before I leave this coding area, I do want to see what happens if I try to print a character, a number as a character. So what I mean by that is if I know 65 is the number 65 when I print it as a number, I can also print it as a character. So on line 16 here, watch what I do. I'm going to put another printf statement in. And as we've used a printf statement, I want you to remember that in the format of an integer, means you'll print something in the format of an integer. After the quotes, you could put something like 65. That will print as the number 65. Simplicity's sake, I'm going to comment out this garbage at the top that I don't like anyway. So that should ignore that. Let's run this version. I just want to show you the 65 number shows up on the screen first. There it is, 65 as an integer. Now in that same print statement, I'm going to change it so that it also prints in the format of a character. A character is a primitive data type. It holds exactly one character in it. So 65 can't print there. But if I tell it to print 65, at the character, it's going to show up in a different format, all on the same line. And I'm going to go down a line within the quotes here so that it's more clear that the line is ended by adding the backslash n going down the line. So now it's going to take the 65, print it first as an integer, then as a character, and then it's going to go down a line. So let's try this version. And what we did here is we just printed that 65 is the letter A. Quiz time. Who remembers what the number was for a bell? I remember correctly, it was seven. Now I'm going to be efficient here, or lazy, or maybe a little bit both, and I'm going to copy this with a control C, and I'm going to paste it right down here, and I'm going to try the number seven in both positions. So seven as a number, and seven as a character, and let's see what that does. So the irony was, the little clock behind me spoke up at that time and said the time and temperature. That was not what happened. Uh, let me turn the volume up max so you can hear it. There should be a bell sound or a beep sound from your computer. There we go. That means I've printed the number 65 as a character and it caused my computer to beep. Now, you could repeat this over and over again, and you'd end up with a solid tone. That's not how we make music in C++, but I've seen it happen. So be selective where you put the sound of a beep coming. An error message would be appropriate, but at every input point, it's probably going to get a little annoying for your players. So we've demonstrated a couple of the different things you can do with ASCII. You can grab characters and print them in printf statements. You can print a character as such. And depending on the keyboard, this next step requires an external keyboard. You can put in by using the Alt key 
in special key sequences, special characters. So in this example, you may not be able to do it if you're on a Chromebook. I'm going to print out, and inside the quotes here, all I'm going to do is print some characters that I type on the keyboard. I won't need any special codes here. I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to press 175 and let go. I'm going to do Alt 176 and let go. Alt 177 and let go. Alt 178 and let go. So these are codes that would show up on the screen. Let's try it. I'm not positive that this is going to work in this world. We'll try it. Because I'm new to online GDB this year. So look, I've got these special characters. So we've now gone through three different ways to do it. The first one is copy and paste. The second is to print a number as a character. The third one is to use alt codes. Now there's a fourth set of data that you might want to use to make your programs include special ASCII characters. And that's to find a source or to take one of your own images and convert that to ASCII art. So what I'm going to go do now is switch to another tab. And there's an example here where I look for ASCII art of a padlock. And I'm going to copy that for a moment. And I'm going to show you a different version of the guessing game submitted by a first session student named Kenny Johnson. And we looked at this a little bit earlier. I have not made any changes to this code. And when you run it, it says basically there's a combination lock and you got to solve three different numbers. It's called lock breaker. So at the top where he has welcome to lock breaker, I think it would be really cool if he showed a lock. So I can't change his code, but what I'm going to do is make a deviant version of it. It's called forking, like a branch. And I'm going to take this, find the point he says welcome to lock breaker. And in here, I'm going to paste this version of the lock. And I'm going to copy, like I did in the earlier session, this section down below. I'm going to pause the recording because it's just copy and paste. Okay, so I've taken a minute to put the printf statements at the front and back. And I wanted to remind you that this backslash is an escape code sequence that says something special is about to happen. So before I run this, and by the way, if you run it, and it says something like a warning, an invalid escape code sequence is there. It doesn't stop you from running the program, but it's less neat. So what I'm going to do starting at the top is find every slash going in that direction that's part of the art and make sure that there's actually two instead of one. And I think starting at the top will make it a lot easier for everybody. Uh, I'm going to do that in the first one. Now there's three in a row here, so I'm just going to go one, two, three. And let's test this and see what this print statement set does to the splash screen or the intro for the story that the student has put in place. So there it is. Welcome to lock breaker. I might need to add a space at the top. And there is a combination lock that was basically printed out from ASCII art. So copying and pasting it within printf statements. We've covered using alt codes. We've printed numbers as characters. Those are all valid things. Uh, one more thing to show you is how to take a picture and turn that into ASCII art. What I'm going to do is switch to, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to do a search on this web, on this web browser here to say um, photo to ASCII. There's a number of sites that will do it. The same idea that I mentioned before on keeping them small is especially important if you're going to take an ASCII image. If I were to use my webcam and get a picture of myself, I'd want to make sure I have a simple background in the background. I would want to make sure that I framed my head in tight. And then I'd want to make sure that I actually specified a very sh small width, maybe 80 characters. So I've pre-done this, so it should go a little bit smoother. I grabbed a picture of myself from the webcam and tried to come up with a simple background. So as I upload that image to the site, keeping it at 80, I'm not going to use color. Okay, so I'm going to scroll that up. I'm not going to invert. I'm going to do convert. 
So it's going to take that image and it's going to give it to me as an image file here. Now remember that characters that are slashes take a little bit of extra work. Scroll back, you can kind of see the ASCII representation looks truer to what that original image was. This could be done, but we start to get into a tedious set of updating certain characters. In, in the Visual Studio environment, there's a better way to do this using a command called type, but I haven't spent enough time in online GDB yet this year to see that we could do it that way. So this will work. This gives you a chance to put images, text, a beep, some different features into your games. Some of you have turned in a version of them already, and some of them you'll be doing some modifications once we do a zombie game coming up soon, and then a maze game. So <clears throat> we'll be working on additional modifications to make them more like your own experience. It's been fun to see what students have done. I want to encourage that creativity and let you know that no one's going to get hired to do exactly what everybody else does. So add your special taste to it. You know, put your logo in there somewhere and, and take pride in doing your own work. All right. Um, I'm going to make it a wrap. I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope this worked. <laughs> If it didn't, I've been talking to myself in a room here. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you. Oh, and like and sub, right, wherever that is. Make sure you like and sub. Just kidding.